If you stacked up a hundred thousand subs, each of them a foot long, you'd go past the Armstrong limit where the blood boils out of your lungs. And if you ate a hundred thousand subs, you'd weigh fifty tons. But I don't recommend it because you'd get all the standard and you'd probably lose your colon. Hey musical scientists, welcome to the 100,000 subscriber Q&A thingamabobber on this channel. This was supposed to be a 75,000 subscriber thing, and then more of you came. So, hi India. Let's get to some questions. Hypothetical, if you were allowed to edit one of your traits with CRISPR-Cas9, what would it be? I think what I would like is to have the benefits of exercise without having to take the time to do exercise because I find myself stuck in my room and I'm wasting away. How do you get ideas for your video? They're totally awesome. I recently discovered the public library, which is like a surprisingly better way to get information than the internet. Like people might think that they're obsolete because the internet now has everything on it, all the information. It's not true. Books are so much better at providing you like a detailed, in-depth idea of a concept. If you're looking to do this kind of thing, go to the library, hit the books, do the actual research that nobody on the internet has time for anymore. And all of a sudden you find all this stuff that you've never heard about. Out of the many comments and compliments you received, what was the most funny, memorable, interesting one? There was one comment I saw, I can't remember who posted it, but they said, my kid turned to me in the middle of this and said, I'm made of molecules? And I just thought that was so cool that there had been this flash of insight of realizing the exact thing I was trying to get across in the past video. Or the students who comment and say like, this is the reason why I went into science or physics or chemistry or whatever, that really is encouraging because that's also what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make people realize that there's really cool stuff at the bottom conceptually of these things you have to dig down to get Get to when you might just find it really boring when you're going into like first year chemistry or physics or whatever. Um, that there's the meat of it is down there, and that when people see that and they're inspired by that and they decide to go and wrestle with it for themselves, that's super cool. Have you ever tried overtone singing? I actually use that for the background of puffed up cores. If you go back and listen to it, there's this kind of wafty synth going on that feels very spacey in the background. I was overtone singing on that, so yes. Do you think education will ever be fully digitized or is there an innate need for physical tutors and teachers? I think that as long as digital media is in the model of one person speaking to many people, it's never going to replace the personal connection, right? Because even one person speaking to a class of 30 people at the front of a lecture hall doesn't do that great of a job. There's sort of, there's a whole bunch of different ranges of people with different problems and different concerns and different questions and different ways of learning. So the proper way that I really like to have myself be taught or to teach anyone else is one-on-one. -on -one. If you could get to the point where digital communication included either one-on-one -on -one interactions like a virtual reality kind of thing or if you get AIs that are smart enough that they can actually take over the functions of teachers and give personalized feedback to anyone who's learning about anything maybe it'll get to that stage but as of now I think of us as more of a supplement than a replacement. If you were going to be stranded on a desert island and could only bring one song with you which one would it not be? Work, 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 everybody do the work, 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 work. How do you go about choosing your collaborators when it's not just you on a song? There's been a lot of sponsorship on the last batch of songs. Do you still need us? That's from Carol Wong on Patreon. Carol, in terms of collaborators, I pretty much just think of an idea and I think, oh, you know that person? That's the person I need to get. That person is better than me at that thing. Your question about sponsorships, I think, is a valid one. Like. It's been a crazy run these past few videos where I've actually got a sponsor for every video and that's been really cool for me. Um, at the same time, even when I'm sponsored, about two thirds of my funding comes from Patreon and about a third comes from the sponsorship itself. Without you Patreon supporters, I would definitely be down in the dumps. That said, if you ever feel like you think I'm in a good enough financial place and you don't want to support me on Patreon anymore, that is totally fine. I wouldn't presume to tell you when it is that you should be supporting my content and when it is that you shouldn't. Like, I am gonna be doing this for free regardless. <laughs> Mark wants to know, do you know any good books that go over the latest in quantum physics accessible to a person without a physics degree? Congrats on 100k. Thanks Mark, um, I've been really enjoying The Particle at the End of the Universe by Sean Carroll. I just completed a podcast with him that's gonna come up next week, so um, listen to that, but also that's a great book for going through really kind of the, the fundamentals of what we know about quantum field theory, and it tries to break it down in a way that I think really works and gave me a few insights that even though I've studied the math, I didn't realize. Brooke would like to know how to approach looking for jobs after you graduate with no experience. I don't know, start a YouTube channel? I'm really not the person to ask. Jason Black asks, where do you start? Is it usually with riffing on song titles? 
I can't help but notice your titles are thematic puns or wordplay on the original song titles. Do you ever encounter songs that musically you'd like to parody but didn't because there wasn't a good way to play on the title? For every song that I actually do on Acapella Science, there are about four or five that go through various stages of either I would love to do that song but I haven't figured out how, or I would love to cover that concept and I have a bad pun for it but it doesn't actually get turned into a song. I do think quite a bit about the titles of these things because the truth of it is that people sort of judge your video before they click on it, right? Like you see Bohemian Gravity and you think, you, you know what that's gonna be. I try to make it something that people can do that with, that then they know what they're getting into. They're much more likely to give it a chance then. That said, if I have a good enough idea, I'll just go with it and then maybe a title will come later and maybe it won't and you know, that's just sort of how it happens. How long does it take to make one video? I pretty much am working on this non-stop, so if you ever want to know how long it took me to do a project, just look at when the previous project was posted and then when this one was posted, do some subtraction, you'll get your answer. What's your favorite project out of all the ones you've completed so far? With CRISPR I felt really proud that I delved into a completely different field that I didn't know anything about. The arrangement on that video I was also super proud of. So CRISPR is pretty close to the top and Tropic Time was one of those ones where I got to try this whole new way of experiencing explaining things much more in your face and demonstrating as opposed to just singing about it. I don't know, but I try to push myself all the time because otherwise I'm just gonna get bored and stagnate and then my content's gonna go downhill, I think. How? <laughs> also in terms of physics and grad school, do you have any tips for someone who perhaps might be trying to get a PhD in astrophysics and is currently in his last year of undergrad and feeling a bit lost? Love your content. Mike, if you're feeling a little bit lost, I would suggest that you do what I did, which is don't jump right into a PhD program. I feel like a lot of universities right now are pushing this joint master's and PhD, like you go right through your master's in a year and then you jump right onto PhD. Um, I was given the option to do that when I started my master's and I decided not to because I felt like you. I felt like I was a little lost, I wanted to test it out a little more. I had a lot of artistic aspirations and I wasn't sure if I wanted to jump into those or whether I wanted to take the whole hog and go get a PhD in physics. So. I did a two-year master's degree and I set myself up for that and at the end of it, acapella science was going on and I decided to jump to that. Life is long and you have the chance to do lots of things, so you can choose to go for it right now or you can take it easy and make sure you're comfortable. What software do you use for video editing? For most of it, I use Adobe After Effects. The entirety of Molecular Shape of You was done in After Effects, so that gives you some idea of the power of it. And then I'll use Adobe Premiere for stuff that's more timing oriented, so like putting a vlog together. Those two pretty much have got you covered. Which are your favorite science or science communication vlogs? Veritasium, Draw Curiosity, Space Time. I've really been enjoying SciShow Psych lately. Simon Clark, Stated Clearly, Kurs Gazak. I don't know, there's a whole bunch more, but those are some off the top of my head. What do you think has been the most successful move you've done so far in your YouTube career? Getting away from multi-channel networks, which are a suck on your time and your energy. How did you get into physics? I have a real interest in going sort of down the levels and getting to what's at the bottom, like the baseline of reality. And physics is sort of the natural place to go for that. So when I went to CEGEP, which is like college in Quebec here, um, I actually spent a long time thinking that I might go into biology, but there were these questions that I wanted answers to that I didn't have and that not even my like CJEP teachers could tell me the answers. It was like stuff like, wh where does gravity come from? And what do you mean it's both a wave and a particle and that kind of thing. And even after my first degree, I found that I was stuck in the 1930s and I just learned quantum mechanics and still there's this whole idea of quantum field theory. I wanted to know if string theory was valid and I was like, okay, well, I would better do another degree, right? So I just kept pushing myself until I got down to what I thought was a sensible bottom layer and then found out, well, we don't really know what's at the bottom, but at least I've done my best to discover it. So now I can go off and explore everything else that has to do with how do these rules now manifest themselves in the world at like larger and larger and larger levels of complexity, right? Which is, that's what chemistry is and that's what biology is and that's what psychology is. It's like going up these different levels of from fundamental fields and particles to human beings. Do you have plans to put more stuff to buy on dftba.com? Yes, I do actually. There's an amazing artist who started making fan art of my work who goes by Cloclo Mono. You might have seen it on Facebook if you saw me share that. Um, I'm gonna be working with her to make at least one t-shirt design and maybe two, so I'll let you guys know definitely when that goes up. Vincent DeHart wants to know, how are you? I'm doing okay, Vincent, thank you for asking. I'm just about to move, actually. I'm headed a few blocks down the street to be right next to my sister to take care of my niece and my nephew who's gonna be born in about a month. And I'm really excited for that, and I'm really excited for the way that this channel has been growing and expanding and how many people have been discovering it. 
Um, new things are in the works. I'm getting to talk to new people and make new projects. And it's summer in Montreal, which means jazz festivals and all manner of cool activities. Okay, I think I'm gonna end it on that. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed from all over the world. It's been amazing to see all of your comments, all of your support, all my Patreon fans. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and keeping it going. And you'll see me again real soon. So my name is Tim Blay and you've been watching Acapella Science. See you later. Acapella science. Doo 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 doo.